it out and I said I'm going to go in the studio and I'm going to record this. I think I, I wrote it and I posted it on Facebook and this local producer saw it and he was like, oh my gosh, we got to record that. And then I went over to the studio and he, he had this track that was just crazy and and militant. <laughs> yes. And um, we put it together and um, I went in there and was on my sister soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's not right, so. But um, I just felt like I needed to have a voice. And I've written other pieces regarding police brutality. I have one called Taste the Rainbow that's mm-hmm. on Amazon. Of course, that's about Trayvon Martin. Um, I did that a few years before I did that one. Wow. And then I have another one on the George Davis experience um, that happened. So I've been writing about it, you know, but I just, I grew angry and, and mm-hmm. frustrated. And then this, that hands up, don't shoot piece, if you listen to it, it's a very, you know, people ask me, uh, with that, well, what is your point? <laughs> it doesn't sound like no, no solution or resolution in it. And I was like, there wasn't. I was frustrated and I was angry. And so <laughs> I had something to say. Right. And so I felt. <laughs> right. And that's what it has to be. You know, you know, um, when it comes to people, you know, critiquing or, you know, looking at what you write and, and, and wanting you to create a solution that, well, then you write the piece yourself, you know, right. if, if you want it, make it happen. I, I know about, other people will get angry and then they'll, it'll spark a, a some fire in them and then they can go and make something happen. You know, as artists, that's what we do. We inspire people. Yes. You know, to get to do something to to make a difference you know we use our voices we use our platforms to speak out against it you know we don't always have a solution you know it's just you know getting it out to the masses yes so with hopeless romantic what are your top what's your, i mean i'm sure you love them all but what are your favorite pieces on that album so on that on that first album, let's see. Um, of course, the Trayvon Martin piece is on there. It's uh, called Taste the Rainbow. Okay. Uh, it is one of my favorites. It was um, put together really, really well um, with some old college friends of mine. Um, they produced it and engineered it, and, and it was a really incredible piece. Uh, another one on there, I collaborated with a local couple by the name of Kelvin Rowe. Um, He's now acting in a lot of films here in the Atlanta area, so he's doing some, some different things outside of poetry. Um, the piece was called, what was that piece called? Oh, wow. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> it's the, it, I want to say, oh, Poetic Prescription. So, okay. You know, kind of about love being the prescription and the person being a poet, I guess. Uh-huh. And then, um, what was another piece on there? Um I have a piece on there about, you know, the fact that I love my black brothers and, you know, our problem with relationships and love and heartbreak and, um, what else? I think, I think those are, uh, then I have another one on there called He Loves Me. Uh, so I have a couple pieces on there that are really good, that I really like. Um, the album is good, but, um, ones that I could play over and over and listen to, those, those, that's the top three or four. This is dope, you know, because I have some plans in the works for expanding the Sister Speak show. And I cannot wait until I'm able to actually manifest from the blueprint to actually putting it into action. Because, honey, when it comes to you and your two albums, oh, honey, you, 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 they're going to get some right. airplay. They're going to get right. some airplay because I've got some a, a nice announcement coming concerning the Sister Speak show. So I'm really excited about that and having you to come on and, okay. you know, feature your 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 poetry. Like, I think this is absolutely dope. You know, I love the fact that I can meet a sister or a brother who has it going on when it comes to the spoken word gift. You know, you're out there, you're going to this venue, that venue, people are requesting you. Not only that, you've got two albums. That means that this sister has the bars and the fire. And she has, <laughs> look, and, and she has the desire. She's obviously no joke. So this is who you need to have in your listening shuffle. This is who you need to have in heavy rotation. We spend a lot of times, you know, focusing on celebrities that we don't know, don't know us, but we end up glorifying or idolizing them and supporting them. If they come out with a scarf or a Q-tip line, there you are. (laughs) 
<laughs> Look, there you are. Ooh, girl, these Rihanna Q tips, girl. They are the bomb. Girl, you got you some Rihanna, you got you some Fenty Q tips. You know, like you completely all on you look, look. Look, all on Rihanna's whole line. You on it. You are on it. You are her shadow shadow. But then you have Soul Scribe the Poet. You may have Lauren Shalere or a poet from the D or you may have all these different artists. And where are you, brothers and sisters? Why aren't you showing the love and support that you show for these other people? Like I said, that don't know you, you know, people are excited about. And now I know a lot of people are like, are you throwing shade at Riri? Look, you don't even know Riri. I don't even know Riri. <laughs> I love Riri. <laughs> Look, <coughs> I don't even know her. So I'm not throwing no shade, but I'm, right. thro- I'm, 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 I'm throwing um, an, obser- an observation. Artist, yes. And- you know, who you, who you see. Yes. And, and have more access to and can support so yes. they can follow their dreams and continue to speak to the community. So, That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. And you know, I know this. Now, this next question that I'm about to ask, <laughs> it has absolutely nothing to do with anything that we've been talking about so far. <laughs> but I have but I have not had an opportunity to talk about this on a huge level. So I'm going to talk about it tonight with you, sister girl. Okay. Uh, this is something that we all saw all over social media on October 31st. We all saw Wendy Williams fall out fall out did you see the video i did see it okay now (laughs) wendy fell out okay um now at first i didn't know what was happening i was like is this a stunt for quote-unquote halloween is you know is this uh, is this a a boo scary moment you know i didn't (laughs) i didn't know what was happening but when I, you know, as I looked at what is happening with Sister Girl, because it was, you know, I've overheated before, okay? Right. I ain't never fell out like that. So, <laughs> right. I want to know, just your own observation, what do you think happened to Wendy Williams on October 31st? Gosh, um, a part of me wants to say that it wasn't a stunt, but a part of me... With it being Halloween and her in a costume, I mean, if she overheated, you think they would have took some of that stuff off of her? Yeah. I mean, she came. She still had on the same clothes that she had on. Nothing. Maybe they were trying to get back to the show. Um, I do know that recent there were recent reports about her husband and yeah. his lover, side chick. You know, yeah. um, and um, so I wasn't sure if she was. You know, had not been eating. You know, she already is small. Yes, yeah, she you know, is. And barely eat. Um, so, you know, and if she was stressed, you know, I, I really honestly don't know uh, because I saw people saying, yeah, I've, I've fallen out and it was exactly like that. I could feel it happening. Um, and um, so, you know, it's hard to say when it comes to someone's health. Um, yeah. I just, you know, I, I hope she's okay and that she's better. But, you know, I know she has a lot of personal problems going on in her life right now that it could have just been that or she hasn't been taking care of herself. But it was it was funny. It, unfortunately, it was very funny because I've never seen one fall out like that. And, and the way she she fell out, it was, um, she you know, tapped I, I felt like it, the station or the, the, the channel, the show, should have done a little bit more. They should have ended the show. Or she should have been seen by someone immediately, opposed oh, to yes. coming back and saying she was overheated. Because oh, yes. that is what really made me question it and doubt it. You know, because it's like if you're not well, if you're overheated, whatever the problem is, you just fell out on national TV. I really don't think you need to be coming back and saying anything to anyone. I mean, <laughs> to make it real, I would have. For me, they would have had to come on and say this today's show is canceled. Hello, you know. Yes, if I fall out, that's it. I don't care. Uh, Ayana, right. look, Ayana fell out at Albertsons. That's it. Okay, day over. Um, right. Ayana yeah, done pa- right. Look, Ayana done passed out at Valero. That's it. That's it. Ayana needs to come home. Okay. Right. The show is right. over. I look. There's only so much of a hero that I'm trying to be in this podcast game. I got my limits, right. 
And if I it, it, look, it, 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 if the ground is shaky and the room is spinning, that's it for me. Because see, right. when I was just looking at, it, I was like, first of all, she's tap dancing backwards. I've never seen that before. I mean, she tap danced backwards, but it looked like something scared the living daylights out of her. It did, you know. Now it, it really did. Now that you say that, it's like she saw something. Oh, she saw something, honey. See, that's what I was getting to. This is my observation. Wendy saw yeah. some, Wendy saw something. You yeah. let me let me. The, the spirit realm is real, and so yeah. we cannot play like it is just us here. There are things that are invisible that can see you that you cannot see, and yeah. the spirit realm will come for your life. I don't know any if any of you all. Well, I know you all have gone to sleep before. So I, I don't know if any of you all have experienced sleep paralysis where you try to move, but you can't or you wait. Oh my gosh, that happened to me. Yeah, they call it astral traveling. Uh, look it up, brothers and sisters. A-S-T-R-A-L traveling where you can see things and hear things, but you're moving at a very slow pace. You can feel a very dark presence uh, in your area. I don't know if you have ever felt that presence sit down on the bed with you to where it makes you feel like you are sinking. I mean, the spirit realm, demons, all of that, witches, it, spiritual warfare, it's real. Now, right. when you are um, dealing, you know, in it, let me say this, when you are involved in the entertainment industry, you can encounter those type of things that I'm talking about. Uh, Period, point blank. It, it makes you think that, you know, Martin, Martin um, <laughs> kind of lost it for a minute, and you had Dave Chappelle. It had a lot of people really, Cat Williams, really lose it. I, I don't know if it was drugs or what, but I know that, some major stuff happened to them. Oh, yeah. You know, um, and, and they just walked away from, you know, some stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, she, I've, I've felt that paralysis before. I've been laying down. Oh, and, yes. And my eyes are open, and it's just, you're just struggling. When you can't get up. You, you can't all. move. At all. And, it, and it's, it's scary. And it's like, am I dying? Am I dead? What? I can't, I can't get up. No, I understand. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It's a horrible, it's a horrible feeling. It's it is. Horrible. It is a horrible feeling, but it lets you know that it is a realm that you don't want to play with. And so when people are involved in Ouija boards and trying to do seances and trying to channel things from the dead, you cannot be my friend. I'm just telling you that right now. We will never... <laughs> We will never hang out or hang in. There is nothing about your energy that I want to be around because you're trying to do something that is forbidden. Communication with the dead is forbidden. So don't come yeah. around me talking about I'm trying to channel my inner liber Liberace or my inner, you know, this or my inner that. You got to get away from me with that because I don't want that to jump on me. See, I was listening to... I was actually reading about like, you know, what happens to us when we go to sleep and you know that there are different type of, there are three demons that like to affect us at nighttime. It's called incubus, succubus, and nightmare. And we all have experienced a nightmare. We all know what it is to have a nightmare and incubus and succubus have, are, are a male, male and female demons that particularly like to plague you when you are trying to be intimate uh they like to come into your dreams you you've heard of the term when they talk about a young boy having a wet dream you know yeah. all of that is a heavy influence and that spirit realm is real that's why we got to pray before you go to bed you know you have to be careful with some of the things that you eat because once again, that realm is real. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know what what, what uh, Wendy saw, but she saw it. She backed up from it, and it made her drop to the floor. Now... And she definitely looked like she saw something. It's funny you say what you eat. Because if I eat pork, after a certain time at night, I have nightmares. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have nightmares. Like, I cannot eat pork after 8 o'clock or too close to bedtime because I will have the worst sleep ever and just, oh my god, it's crazy. Um, and you think it would make me stop eating pork altogether, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but eating it too late at night, every time I do, 
oh my God, my sleep is so disturbed and I, I have some of the most terrifying feelings at night. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so what I want to encourage you to do is, you know, like I said, and, and we all need need this. You know, we I, every, some of us have it. Some of us don't. You know, I after me going through this affliction, I said, you know what? I've got to really get it together in a way that I am really putting good things into my body and not things that just taste good to me, but things that are really, really good for me because I have a peanut allergy. So I just can't eat anything. I have to read all the labels. I have to make sure that it's not manufactured in a facility that processes peanuts, tree nuts, and all that other type of stuff. So I'm on a strict, I just can't grab anything and eat it. But that does not mean that I eat the best. So after this last affliction, I was just like, you know what, I, I've got to change. And I just, when I was looking at these Wendy's commercials and all these other commercials before, I'd be like, mm, that looks a little tasty. But now it's just like, when I look at it, I'm like, ugh, disgusting, yuck. Only thing I'm thinking about right now is berries and frozen fruit because those are the best, the best fruit to eat unless the fruit is, you know, the right during the right season. But, you know, just, I just want to change everything up because my dreams, just like you said, my dreams, you know, I'm always running. I'm always trying to get away from a group of bad people, barely making it, uh, you know, just constantly on the go. And I know that's tied into some of what I'm eating, some of what I'm thinking, and some of what I'm intaking as far as entertainment is concerned. And the Most High God will get your attention at night now. That's a lot of times where he'll get your attention. He has, he requires his time and he will get your attention. You know, we're always busy during the day, a lot going on. And the best time to wake your game up is to give you a dream, uh, to, you know, have you toss and turn at night, you know, and that's all because he's trying to get your attention. And some people receive it. And some people just like, you know, I need to stop eating, you know, uh, fried macaroni from Burger King. Oh, oh, let's talk about it. Okay, we're going to switch the subject just for a minute. Sis, could you just tell me why? Why they are making fried eggshell tacos at Taco Bell? Why are they making macaroni and cheese fried up? Talk to me about it. For fried egg taco. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You know, they're doing some of everything. Anything they can do. I guess somebody probably was playing around and decide, decided it was healthy or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking. It is funny because it's like, what? Uh, uh, I'm okay. thinking. I'm thinking maybe that Taco Bell, Burger King, and anybody else who wants to get on the gross train has a contract with the local emergency rooms in our states. Um, I feel like if you're going to order that food, you might as well just get take it to go and eat in the middle of the ER. So after you eat, they can just say, okay, what are your symptoms? Because I'm just telling you, some of that food right there, you got to eat at the emergency room. There's no way. I just like, when are they going to stop? When are they going to just stop with the nastiest food? You know, they just always coming up with stuff. And there's some people that are just like, hey, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. And it's just like it's all designed to make us really not be healthy. They don't care about us at all. No, of course not. It's, it's, about, uh, it's about money and the health industry making what they can off of us in our house, which is something that has been on my mind definitely a lot lately. Um, just doing better. Uh, they, they don't care about what happens to us. We are just, we are dollar sign. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. Because it just makes me think how, you know, like they're using that black woman to sell Popeyes. Oh, she gonna get that check. She does not care about anything else but she knows for a fact that she's going to get that check. And, you know, you got to think about it. It's like, okay, the sister got to work. But at the same time, you know, she's advertising for something that is unfortunately creating a lot of health problems for our people. You know what I mean? Right. It's just like 
Operation Genocide. Let's create so many different food items that we can take out masses of people uh, city to city by giving them grease poisoning. Because I know I've had grease poisoning before, especially from KFC. Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. I mean, yeah. KFC will take you out, honey. Take you out. <laughs> it's definitely all about choices, you know, and um, we all just have to make up in our minds to eat better and to do better each day, you know, that we wake up and before we eat, you know, because, uh, it, you, know, you know, self-preservation, there we go again. <laughs> yes. You know, do you want to feel better? Do you want to, you know, uh, look better? You know, something that, we, you know, we all constantly have to revisit, you know, I'm definitely in that space and trying to get back on track. But, um, you know, those commercials and someone said, if it has a commercial, don't eat it. Wow. <laughs> wow. If it has a commercial, don't eat it or drink it. <laughs> wow. You know, and that's crazy. Stuff, you know, it's not advertised. It's not it's going not. to be advertised. Someone needs to sell that to you. They want you to get the stuff that's fast for you. Yes, they and do. I'm, yeah. And you know what I'm just curious is like, so the people who make the bad food, what are they eating? If they know right. that this is, I want to know, like, where do they shop? Where do they get their food from? Like, what they're does... Not, they're, not, they're not eating it, that's for sure. They, they know how it's made. I have not watched What the Hell yet on Netflix, but I've heard a lot about it, um, about the way our food is made and processed. And, you know, we all know that our, a lot of the stuff that is made is bad for us, and the GMOs and the, all the salt and sodium yes. and all of that stuff, you know, it's... Uh, you know, if we could get away from it completely, that'd be great, you know, but it's, um, uh, it's, it's life ch choices that we just have to make. I'm serious about it because I was just like, you know, I'm looking in, you know, like I look at uh, Naked and Afraid. I watch that a lot and I look at, you know, survival shows and, okay, different plants that you can eat and, you know, different fruits and things of that nature. And it's just like, you know, what you know, what we have to do a better job is, is just learning our greens, learning what is edible, what is not, you know, getting back to becoming farmers, growing our own food, you know, that's what it's about, or, or linking up with local farmers who, you know, ha right. sell their own produce, you know, we have, a, uh, we have a few of them out here living in Texas, so it's really about our health, brothers and sisters, this evening, and any other evening, so do you have another piece that you would like to share with our brothers and sisters this evening, and then what we'll do is share all of your you know, Instagram, Facebook, and all of that, how they can purchase your album, you know, all of that good stuff. But do you have another piece that you could share with us this evening? Um, I do. I do. Um, I will try to do the, um, the sister's empowerment piece. Yes. Um, it's called She, the first song on my, um, my new album, sophomore album, um, and it's, uh, it's a piece I wrote uh, just celebrating my sisters, all types of women who, you know, struggle, who advance, who are still on their grind, who are shining beautifully regardless of their journey. Beautiful. Well, go ahead, my sister. Okay, the piece is entitled one more time. The piece is called She. She. Oh, I love it. Brothers and sisters, you know, we have been blessed this evening. We've been having a wonderful conversation for those of you who might just be tuning in with Soul Scribe, the poet. She is a sister queen. She is powerful. She has lightning and thunder in her lyrics. She is well talented. She has two albums, okay? Two albums full of spoken word pieces that are going to bless your mind, bless your soul, bless your spirit and she has shared with us her first piece hands up don't shoot correct yeah and the second one that she is going to share with us on coming to the stage is entitled she brothers and sisters soul scribe the poet let's give her a round of applause as she shares with us she she be beautiful like the sunrise over the ocean on a cloudy day Strong like a single mother, five kids, no job, but still knows how to pray. She be confident like she know when to speak and when not to speak. 
intelligent like she holds several degrees, classy like every time we speak we should be sipping tea, she be my sister girl. My girl, if you need to talk, you know, I got you girl. Down to earth so she never looks down on others around her. She be a fighter like a Scottish record. She be elated every time she can learn just a little bit more. Resilient like 1970s Afros, fresh like 1980s Adidas shell toes. She be ATL, Grady, baby. I ain't the killer, but don't push me. <laughs> Sunday morning, sweet Sadie. Powerful yet humble. Fearless yet warm, she be Maya Angelou's phenomenal woman. Inspirational like Mahalia Jackson, what a friend we have in Jesus. She be your motivator, not your hater. Cause she celebrates others' success. Sisterhood manifested, she be committed to her hopes and dreams like Michelle Obama to the president's team. She be loving, she be shining, she be bright. An overachiever at times, but still knows when to hop on a flight, never met a stranger. Free-spirited, she be passionate about other people genuinely. She be what black girls rock is all about. She be that whisper in your ear, don't ever stop swimming, don't ever doubt. She be that fuel to your fire when you're running low on energy. She, mm. she be everything many aspire to be. Mm. She be that sense of humor in a crowded room that puts everyone at ease, that southern charm that makes you smile when a shoulder is exactly what you need. She mm. be me, she be you, she be we, she be us. Beautiful, intelligent, confident, classy black woman. Yeah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters give it up for Soul Scribe the Poet. I told you. I told you. I told you guys. I told you guys. Oh, that was absolutely like absolutely phenomenal. The power, the intonation, the intensity. You know, um, it's nothing like being a sister. It's nothing like it. I am so glad that the Most High God chose me to be a sister. I'm very grateful. I'm so grateful. A brown skinned sister at that. I'm so, so grateful for for my tone and who I am. Why? Because when I hear when I hear pieces like she, I know you're talking about me. And I can, yeah. and I can identify brothers and sisters. You can identify with the lyrical talent that's coming from this sister this evening. Hands up. Don't shoot. She. Okay. Brought to you tonight by soul scribe, the poet brothers and sisters. And you know it tonight. Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, 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 snap, snap. Uh, let me just do mine. Let me do my snaps <laughs> this evening, okay? Okay. Thank you so oh, much. of course, of course. No, thank you. So, what I would like for you to do is tell my brothers and sisters how they can get in touch with you, uh, all of your social media information, how they can purchase your albums, how they can support you, and what your next events are. Okay, so uh, you can find me um, on uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, YouTube, all at Soul Scribe the Poet, just like it sounds, uh, no fancy spelling, just Soul Scribe the Poet, um, and I am on SoundCloud as well, uh, of course my album's on iTunes and Bandcamp, and once you go to my a lot of my pages everything is linked together so that you're able to click through and find you know music or you know poetry that you want to just read things like that um and so yeah all of that stuff is online you know if you do a google search soul scribe the poet um you, you should be able to pull up some stuff as well if you want to follow me uh, again you can just go to my facebook page and like i, I constantly update that so um, so yeah, um, I currently, do I have any performances coming up? What is this? December? I think right now I'm, I'm pre in the clear of this, oh, it's November. It's I'm November. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't have anything going on this month. Um, kind of taking it easy. Um, it's the holidays. Um, but I do have some stuff in early 2018 that's booked. Um, but if you, you want to follow me and keep up with what I have going on, you just, go to soul scribe the poet on facebook and that's probably the best way or on on instagram i'm constantly updating that as well so 
Thank you for sharing that. Now, brothers and sisters, she is a gorgeous sister. So when you go into a direct messages, now I know, <laughs> I, look, I know some people are probably like, could you please let me manage my own direct message rules? I mean, I'm just saying though, brothers and sisters, keep it professional, keep it classy. I don't know why you would not want to have this sister at your next event. This is who you have at your woman's empowerment. This is who you have at your woman's conference. This is who you have coming to talk to your high school girls. Like, you know, on Sunday morning, church, I've done churches, weddings, uh, high school, junior high. I've done a number of different types of venues. You'd be surprised. Come on, brothers and sisters. Birthday parties, anniversary celebrations. That's what's I up. Mean, that is yeah. what's up. That's what's up. See, like I said before, all of my special guests are impacting the community and they are dynamic. How are they impacting the community? With their passions. She's just passing through the Sister Speak show. Oh, you can see that this queen has it going on, brothers and sisters. So this is what I want you to... Oh, you are welcome. This is what I want you all to do, brothers and sisters. I need you to purchase her album. I plan on getting it. Both of them. We need a support. We don't need to be hitting her talking about, can I get a juke? Can I get a deal? Can, you no, know, you pay the full <laughs> price that you're supposed to pay for it. Now, some of you are like, I haven't paid for an album in about 10 years. That's your personal situation. But when it comes to this sister, this is how she makes her other coins. So I need you to sew into what she has going on. So many of you, like I said, if Rihanna came out with a Q-tip, y'all would have that... <laughs> Y'all would have that Fenty Q-tip all in your ears right now, getting all that wax out, talking about, uh-uh, girl, these is Rihanna Q-tips, okay? <laughs> I'm serious. Some of y'all would take the Q-tips and be in public using them just so people can know that you got some Rihanna Fenty Q-tips, okay? So look, with those Q-tips, I need you to be bumping this album that she has. I need you to bump both of them, okay? So listen, brothers and sisters, subscribe to Poet. I mean, what did you think about her so far? Let's just give her another round of applause for coming on the Sister Speak show this evening. <laughs> Excuse me. So my sister, my sister, my sister, who do you want to give a shout out to this evening? Uh, you know, anybody that you want to give a shout out to, your supporters, your peoples, go ahead and take it away. Absolutely. Of course, I want to shout out my babies, Egypt, my daughter, and Ethan, my son. Um, all of my friends and family that continuously support me either with the word or by purchasing my album, coming to show everyone who, who believes in me and pushes me to keep going. You know, when I don't want to go, <laughs> I understand. I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you and for Thank other you. people who create platforms for artists to share their work. Um, their stages on either on online or you know different methods. Um, you know I'm very appreciative of that. You know because the poetry community needs that support, that constant support. And so, so yeah, that that's what I definitely want to give a shout out to. Oh, and everyone listening tonight, of course. Oh, of course, of course. Shout out to all of her supporters. Shout out to all of the Sister Speak Show listeners. So, did you have a good time on the Sister Speak Show this evening? Oh, absolutely. I did. I love your energy. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's a great show. Definitely. Thank you. I'll have to tell everyone about it and share it on my social media. Yes. Sure. Oh, I appreciate that. And what happens is I will be giving you a copy of the show. I'm going to send it to you within probably the next 30 minutes once we get off the phone. Send you that link so you can, you know, share with everybody. And okay. I, I definitely want you to come back on the Sister Speak show. You know, um, like I said, I've got some things that I'm working on and I'm really going to be here for the independent artists, whether they are spoken word artists, whether they are musicians, you know, that is my focus and my passion. I want to be able to create a lane for my brothers and my sisters who are independent artists to where your, all of your, you know, your music or your poetry is being played in rotation all over 
the world, you know, since we are now syndicated through Amazon Alexa, syndicated means that our show has been picked up and it is um, able to uh, reach anyone internationally. So I'm very, very grateful to have uh, been given that extension and that opportunity. So what that opportunity means for my brothers and sisters is this, you know, if I, if I grow, you grow. If I'm going somewhere, you're going somewhere. I'm not a hater. I'm so confident in the most high God and what he has already predestined for my life that there, it would only, um, it would be a tragedy if I did not, you know, bring my brothers and sisters on to this platform, share with everybody who you all are. No, I'm, I am not in the least bit intimidated or salty when it comes to my brothers and sisters getting on at the same time that I do, because I know that the most high God is not a midget. And since he is not a midget and I don't have to rub his stomach for uh, three times uh, to, to get what I want. I am very confident that when my brothers and sisters come on here, that they get, they deserve, every ounce of recognition that they can receive so with me saying that I'm creating a lane for all of you independent artists and it is going to be ooh, it's gonna be mm, I cannot wait I'm so excited so <laughs> you awesome. you and I are connected forever you are sister queen and you are a forever family member of the sister speak show so i'm not saying bye bye i'm saying i had a wonderful time talking to you you're very articulate absolutely beautiful your work is dynamic your work is fire and so i am blessed to have met you on this journey my sister queen well same to you same to you definitely love your energy and we will definitely connect i'm, I'm excited anytime i get the opportunity to share but definitely with people who i vibe with and who uh, who are very engaging. So anytime you want me to come back, just let me know. I know I'm, I'm there. Oh, I can't wait because look, one day my whole point is I want to be able to take this show to where my guests come in and we sit down and we vibe out. Face to oh, face. That's happen. I can already see that happening. Oh, you got that. thank you. Oh, thank you. I received that because that's what I want. I want us to come in, sit down, and I just want the brothers and sisters all over the world to be like, this is the grooviest station. This is the grooviest, one of the grooviest podcasts. Like, we're going to bring back a whole nother element to what it means to have a cultural renaissance platform so it's coming and with people like you my sister oh yeah we going somewhere for sure for sure <laughs> <laughs> so i'm excited so i just want to say this is not goodbye but i will definitely talk to you later i will talk to you later sis. okay oh brothers and sisters Ooh, i'm so excited <laughs> You know, like, subscribe the poet don't play, okay? She doesn't take any mess. Two albums. Her first album. Hopeless Romantic. Okay? Oh my gosh. Like, she was just telling you, like, everything that comes on her album. What you can expect, okay? So I want you to listen. I want you to listen to this. You've got to go and pick up her albums. You just got to. You got to support this sister, this queen. Like, she's dope. Like, when I was listening to some samples of her product, her poetry, her gift, her passion, I was just like, ooh, mm, ooh, this sister, ugh, she's on fire. <laughs> and you know that's one of my favorite words. Like, she's got bars and she's on fire. And so that's what we have coming to the stage on the Sister Speak show. Coming to the stage is for spoken word artists. It's for poets, poetess, for actors, you know, those who do monologues, uh, film directors, producers. We highlight the arts, okay? And it is about highlighting spoken word artists. It's nothing like some good poetry. It's, not, it's nothing like it. It's nothing like a sister or a brother getting on stage, giving you that fire, and relating to your everyday journey. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so serious. So, subscribe to Poet Queen, Sister Queen. 
I salute you and I thank you. <coughs> Excuse me for coming on the Sister Speak show this evening. Brothers and sisters, the time has been well spent. Now listen, this contest is still going. I need you to make sure that you chat with us live. Log in, follow the Sister Speak show, chat with us live. You get two free tickets to Bones and Bubbly Game Night, January 19, 2018, 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. Put on by Hear Ye Podcast. For more information, you can go to hearyepodcast at gmail.com. Tickets are $10 and you can purchase them on Eventbrite. This event has all of the DFW podcast coming out. I want to meet you. Don't you want to see me? I want to see you. Don't you want to meet these sisters and the rest of the other brothers and sisters who will be coming out for this event? Yes. I need you to come out. I need you to support. I need you to represent. I need you to chat live so I can give you these tickets for free. Anyway, brothers and sisters, the time has been well, well spent. So who you got coming on your show next time, Ayana? I'm so glad that you asked. On the tour, brothers and sisters, Allie. Oh, 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 the fire doesn't stop on the Sister Speak Show. We've got Allie coming on. Allie is an independent artist straight out of Houston, Texas. When this sister comes on, she can blow. Okay, she has a strong, powerful voice. She just released an album. So we're going to talk about her album and what's going on with that, all of her performances, her journey, her passion. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters, we make the known known on the Sister Speak show. I mean, why not? I mean, all of my guests are literally phenomenal. (laughs) I'm so excited. And you know what? Even though I didn't feel well, even though you heard some little nasty coughs in between there, you know, sounds like I need to blow my nose. Guess what? I do. And you did. But the show must go on. Still got to have energy. Still got to be alive. Still got to give you what you need, what you want. You know, got to do what you got to do here on the Sister Speak show. And I want to send a shout out to my husband because he took great care of me. Oh, he took some good, good, good care of me. Kept the Theraflu coming. At first I was like, ain't no any freeze in here, is it? Because I ain't trying to end up on snapped or nothing I don't know what's in here why you keeping why you keeping the cup full no I'm just playing <laughs> thank you honey I appreciate you for taking good 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 care of me carrying me to the ER looking after me and dealing with all of my moaning and groaning <laughs> I appreciate you and I love you brothers and sisters I want you to hug your husband hug your wife kiss your husband kiss your wife Kiss your children, kiss your child, lock your doors, lock your windows. Look, it's it's freezing. It's absolutely freezing. I saw a polar bear with a beanie, gloves, and, and, and as Ayana Turner said, some Uggs on. Okay? Look, it's cold out there. So stay warm. Drink you some water before you go to bed and when you wake up. And I want you to pray without ceasing. I need you to understand that this too shall pass. I need you to understand that even though you're going through something right now, you don't understand what it is that you have got to trust. Your character is being developed. You're being shaken. You're being prodded. You're being probed. You're confined. It's uncomfortable. It's dark. And you really want to know, like, what is it that I need to do in order to get out of this situation? You're just going to have to know. Number one, be still, have faith, understand that you're more than a conqueror, press your way through, pray without ceasing, repent, get back to following the laws, read the word, understand that the word was written about you and for you, okay? That's, you are who the Bible is speaking of. Like, you need to, you know, recharge, resuscitate be restored, renewed. I I get it. I mean, we are in almost the end of November and some of us have been through some things this year on every single hand. We've been tried every single hand. I mean, can't catch a break almost whether it's through family, friends, 
husband, wife, neighbor, or maybe it's just you. You know, we can't always just sit there and blame other people. What is it about you? What do you need to work on, brothers and sisters? What do you need to work on? What do you need to let go of? What do you need to start doing? I want to encourage you to tap into your passions, but I need you to understand this. You are not in control and you don't have all power. You better start linking up to the one who is in control and who does have all power. I'm not focusing on Trump. I didn't vote for him. That's not my issue. I'm focusing on the most high God. Now, a lot of you are uh, nervous. That's because you have assimilated into the Babylonian customs. Some of you right now are rushing, rushing to get Thanksgiving dinner together. Why don't you just take the time out to find out what Thanksgiving is all about? Why do you celebrate the things that you celebrate without first finding out the history of them? Some of you right now are getting ready to scrounge for Christmas and go broke. You know, if you don't celebrate it, you won't go broke. Now, some of you are saying, what? Excuse me? Yeah, I used to celebrate all the holidays. I sure did. And that's when I was walking around with my eyes shut and my ears closed. So where I am in this life and in this moment, I have been able to do my research. And plus, I have a husband who's always reading and investigating and learning the history. And he teaches me. And I'm very grateful for that. Nothing worse to be under somebody who has not a clue. Who's leading you today, brothers and sisters? All oh, the time has been well spent. This is Ayana signing off from the Sister Speak show. I'll talk to you on Thursday when we have the tour. My special guest, Allie. Brothers and sisters, you have a wonderful evening. I'll talk to you later. Take care.